I'm back with you uh, demonstrating another way you could use um, fresh wild garlic which if you're lucky enough to have a little patch here and there near to where you live could be a really nice way to get some fresh greenery into your life during this period of bizarre lockdown. I do hope you and yours are well and you're managing to find exciting ways to keep yourself busy. That's sort of what we decided to do really is do a few little videos to, well I was going to say add interest to your long lockdown days, but I think that's probably pushing it a bit. Just add some more content to your long lockdown days. Um, so if you're interested, today we're going to be making a wild garlic and nettle soup. So full of, packed with energy and iron and greenery and vitamins and minerals and all the things that you can read about if you Google what nutritional value do nettles and wild garlic have on the internet rather than watching this video. So, we're gonna start with the holy trinity of soup bases. We've got one onion, finely chopped, one carrot, finely chopped, and two ribs of celery, finely chopped. Um, adding to the mix, we're gonna put in one leek, which has also been finely chopped, and one potato, which has been diced. Um, the potato is there to largely thicken it up, but if you wanted to use something else and you didn't have potato, I think a cup of rice would also work pretty well. So, I'm going to pop over to the stove and show you how it's done. See you in a minute. So, we are going to use quite a big pan, um, one with a lid as well, because we're going to need to let it simmer with the lid on for a while. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is sauté the stock base. So, I'm going to just use a little knob of butter, put that into a medium heat pan. I'm also going to add a glob of oil as well. So, if you add oil to the butter, it means the butter doesn't burn, um, and you get that lovely buttery flavour, which you only get from using butter. It's a good thing to use in moderation. Um, so I'm just going to let that butter melt a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to pop in are the onions. So we've got one onion here, which has been finely chopped. And put those in. And just give them sort of a minute or so on their own. Just take on a bit of colour. Just going to stir those around. Um, and then to that, I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. So we had two ribs of celery, finely chopped, a carrot, finely chopped, one leek, finely chopped, and a potato as well to give it some thickness. One potato um, cut into chunks. So I'm just going to chuck the rest of that in now. And these little guys need to sauté for probably about 15 to 20 minutes to give them a chance to soften. So we'll get them nice and sort of going now on a higher heat. Um, stir them all around, get them to take on a bit of colour, but you don't want too much colour. So once they're starting to sort of wilt a little bit and take on a bit of colour, I'm going to turn the heat down and put the lid on and leave them to simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so the soup paste has now been sautéing for sort of 15 to 20 minutes. If you have a look, it looks all nice and reduced and getting a little bit soft and squidgy, which is just what we want. So we're now going to put in 1.2 litres of vegetable stock or chicken stock. I actually don't have any fresh stock, which is quite unusual for me. So I'm just going to use 1.2 litres of boiling water, and I've added three OXO chicken cubes. Again, you could use vegetable if you want. So I'm just going to put the stock in. That's just the meat stock. And then I'm just going to make it up to the 1.2. Two. And we're just going to bring this stock up to the boil. And as we do so, we're going to be adding the nettles in batches. I'm just going to get rid of those. Here they are, the beautiful nettles. But, but do check if they're still stinging. If they're still stinging, make sure you're using gloves. Okay, so I'm just going to keep the pan on a sort of medium to high heat. And as we go, I'm going to add the odd handful of nettles which of course have all been picked through to make sure there are no bizarre or poisonous other leaves in there um, and they're all nicely washed. So I'm just going to add the nettles a few bits at a time. What I did with the nettles was pull them off the stalks so you're just left with the nice fresh leaves. So I'm going to continue in this vein, um, making sure, so I'm just looking at the time, 
So we're going to be doing this for, for about 10 minutes, um, gradually heating up the stock and adding a handful of nettles every minute, two minutes or so. I'll come back to you when I've done it. I've added all of the nettles now incrementally and they're all now boiled down and it's starting to look like a really lovely chunky sort of little soup you can see. So the nettles are now um, pretty much cooked. So the last thing we're going to do is add the 100 grams of wild garlic leaves just for the last two minutes of the cooking. They're so sort of young and tender they don't need very much cooking. I'm just going to stir that in. Um, and we're just going to cook that for another couple of minutes. Now, as per usual, I refrained from seasoning this until the end, really. You never know how salty the stock is going to be. Stock cubes can vary in terms of the saltiness. And as much as I'm a fan of salt, you can't unsalt something once it's cooked. So best thing to do would be give this its full cooking time. So I'm going to give it another minute for the wild garlic to wilt a little. I'm going to take it over there, whiz it with a stick blender, put it back on the stove, check it um, for flavour, and then I'll season them. Now then, I'm just going to give the soup a little blitz. The nettles are quite stalky, so this can take a while. I'll be back. After two or three minutes in the blender, the soup should look sort of like this, uh, which is a really gorgeous, sort of glossy green, unctuous, soupy thing. I'm just going to try it a little bit. Mmm really lovely it's sort of a bit spinachy it's very green and very earthy so it definitely needs a little bit of seasoning so I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt there and I've already added a little bit of black pepper to taste you just got to keep trying these things and everybody's taste is slightly different mm. it's absolutely perfect oh, I can't believe I'm not a So I wanted to give you another little additional recipe tip, and that's if you pick the little flower buds from the wild garlic, they come up on little sort of fronds from the plant, and they're just basically the casing of the flower around the flower before they open. And I picked these from a variety of different plants, so I haven't just left the plant with no flowering potential. But what you can do with these is pickle them in vinegar, where I'm going to use some pink peppercorns and maybe some Szechuan peppercorns as well, um, and then you can just use them like capers, you can put them in salads, you use them in a salsa verde, you use them with whatever you would usually use capers for. You can use them as a little substitute. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the pickling liquor. So it's quite an easy recipe to remember. You've got 50 grams of cider vinegar, 50 grams of sugar and 50 grams of water. So I'm going to pop those into a little pan over a medium heat. So in goes the cider vinegar. 50 grams, 50 grams of the sugar. And then I'm going to pop the water in as well and we're just going to mix that together um, and let it come to the boil and when it's come to the boil we're going to add the pink peppercorns and a little bit of salt and leave it to cool um, I'll be back in a minute the pickling liquor is starting to come to the boil so I'm just going to turn the heat off and I'm just going to add a little handful of these gorgeous pink peppercorns Maybe a few more, because they look so lovely. And actually, I'm going to get some Szechuan, Szechuan peppercorns as well, which give this wonderful sort of numbing heat. They're actually not peppercorns, Szechuan peppercorns. They're a sort of, they're a flower from a tree. Um, and they just have this incredible aromatic smell, and they give it a real sort of numbing heat. But all this is going to be quite subtle, because the little garlic flowers are just going to be pickled in it. So we're going to wait for this mixture to cool, um, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to jar it all up. So here's the pickling liquor after it's cooled for a little while. And now the pickling liquor is ready, all we're going to do is take a sterilised jam jar, which the best way to sterilise I find is just to put a jam jar into a fairly hot oven for 10 minutes, and that kills all the nasty. So this is just come straight out of the oven using a little jam jar with a lid. And we're going to pop the wild garlic flower bulbs straight into there. And then all we're going to do is add a tiny bit of salt to the pickling liquor, just a little 
little sprinkling. Smell that around. And then we're just going to pour this liquor all over the top, like so. Remembering that the jar is hot. I'm just going to stir that around a little bit, get it all mixed in. And you need to pop this in the fridge. It'll probably be ready to eat in a week or so. It needs to have a week to pickle for sure. And just keep stirring it around. And then you can pop that in the fridge and eat it whenever you want. Voila. So that's about it for now, chaps. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this a little bit useful. And tune in again next week and I'll be back doing something else. Inventive. Ciao, ciao. Hopper, don't you fence me in. Thank you so much for watching our video. We do hope you liked it. And if you did, please subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get told every time that we put a new video online. And if you really, really liked it and want to help us make more, you can support us on Patreon. Just click on the link below and once you're signed up, you'll have access to exclusive MP3s and live Zoom video chats and many more fabulous things. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next video. Thank you.